Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikivi, original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnee. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back, Wi-Fi, to another episode of The Wireless Woman. And in true Taylor Swift anti-hero fashion, it's me. I'm the problem, it's me. And I'm back to talk today about the anti-hero. The dark hero, the dark knight. So often we want to be superheroes. I myself have my own superhero, the wireless woman. And today <laughs> I've made up my arch nemesis anti-hero dark grid so i am going to take you on a journey that i believe is something we all need to be exploring which is our shadow man i am a big proponent of doing shadow work and we're going to get into that today but before we get into that content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. I need all of my people who aren't afraid of the dark to the front of the class. It is time for today's transmission. All right, welcome back, wi fis to another underground transmission of the Wireless Woman. <laughs> Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Today, we are going to be talking all about the anti-hero. I'm not peaceful, nor do I surrender. <laughs> the dark heroes, the heroes we love so much, the ones that steal our hearts, the superheroes that live in the light and make all the right decisions and do good for the good of mankind. Oftentimes have their own very dark backstories and the superhero is created as a protection really most of the time from those superheroes darkest fears but you'll see as their character continues to develop that eventually some dark arch nemesis version of that same superhero is going to come out those fears that we don't face they often take on a life of their own. So I already know what y'all are going to say, and I don't want to hear it. But I went out on a date <laughs> a couple weeks back, and yes, I am still all boy boycott, okay? If there are boys in the mix, they shall be boycotted. But I never said anything about a man. Anyway, it remains to be seen. Your boos mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer. I went on this date to see Black Adam, and this is a movie I never would have seen. Had no reason to see it. Didn't even know it was a Shazam movie. Never seen a Shazam movie in my life, so it was awkward for many reasons. But I'm glad that I went. <laughs> it definitely was a movie I never would have picked for myself. But I can honestly say, after what felt like seven hours in the theater watching the movie, I felt 
scene. I was a slave until I died. Then I was reborn a god. Black Adam is what we call an anti-hero. And spoiler alert, there will be some spoilers in this video. If you don't want to hear about it, go ahead and like the video. Leave a comment, a fire headphones emoji, and click off. No, Sister Terry, if it's over your head, jump off the live, baby. But for those of you that are going to stick around with me who maybe actually went to go see Black Adam or either like me have absolutely no interest in going to see Black Adam. So the spoiler ain't going to spoil nothing. I'm going to share my experience. So The Rock played in Black Adam. I didn't even know there was a rock movie coming out, but it was really great to see him do dark, sarcastic comedy. His characterization was very... Iron Man-esque in that it was <laughs> dark and sarcastic. And I love that in a, in a superhero, in a hero. I love those qualities. But it was also reminiscent for me of Hancock. And the Hancock movie made me cry. Because there are so many instances of people that people need but those people end up being rejected by people, people who are afraid of them and who don't understand them. And now that we live in a world where popularity is power, where popularity has found its way into every fabric of life, politics, economics, like it's the wildest thing to think that if you can influence people and get the largest group of people to come and follow you, that that equates to money, power, influence, prestige. Like we literally have popular people who are vile human beings and we allow those people to dictate policy. Um, it's just not something that I <laughs> ever saw coming as a kid of the 80s where you watch the Rocky movies and you watch the Karate Kid movies. And there's so much focus on internally having good character, even when doing the right thing isn't convenient. Um, it's odd to live in 2022 where doing the wrong thing, saying despicable Things that would probably make your mother cry can actually get you a following, can actually get you an endorsement, a sponsorship. It's weird. It's like all those decades ago when Charles Barkley said, I'm not a role model. I am not a role model. I'm not paid to be a role model. Everybody was in singed, in flamed. Nowadays, Charles Barkley would be a better role model than the role models that we have. I think it's time. We're at a time in history where people who are not afraid of the shadows, people who are not afraid to step out from droves and packs of people to think independently, to have deductive reasoning are going to be endowed and empowered to lead eventually, not right now or anything like that. But this is that time in the Rocky movie after he's lost the first fight where you have to be able to abandon everything you think you know. You have to dig deeper than what the last victory cost you to now come up with something that will defeat this super villain. The thing that I liked about the Black Adam movie was you know, early in the movie, they put him down at the bottom of the ocean. And I already knew based on how long the movie should be, because that was like a super long ass movie. It probably wasn't even that long. It just it felt long. And that was weird because usually when a movie feels long like that, I didn't like it. <laughs> but this one I liked. But I knew when they put him down at the bottom of the ocean in that watery grave, I was like, they're going to need him again. They're going to need him again. When they call, a hero's what we're going to give them. 
you had these clean cookie cutter superheroes that really were not going to get their hands dirty. They weren't going to do the dirty work. They wanted the glory work of being heroes. But with Black Adam, you had this person who couldn't be deemed a hero because of his past, because of mistakes that he had made, which to me was kind of wild. Because when you look at like the Dark Knight, Batman and, you know, Superman, when he went on his little dark journey and all that, mostly all of the superheroes we have actually have super dirty, dark past. Those shadow past are what drives the goodness in them. But you know, for the purpose of this film, they kept telling Black Adam, like, you're the problem. Like, we can save the people, but you are a threat because you are not a hero. I never said I was a hero. And I think it was interesting because his passion for his people, his passion for liberty and freedom was not anything that anybody was regarding as an admirable characteristic of a hero. However, they were more afraid of him, afraid of his power, because the superheroes knew that they couldn't stop him. He was willing to sacrifice himself and give up his own power in order to keep people safe. Like they pretty literally convinced him that he was the problem. And when he went away and the force that he had actually been fighting against became greater than what the superheroes could fight, then it became a situation like my enemy's enemy is my friend. Okay, now you need me. You're willing to use me even when you don't appreciate me. And I think there's a lesson to be learned in that because there were a lot of really great quotes that came out of the movie. And this isn't like a movie review, so I don't really feel the need to throw it out. If you want to see it, go see it. If not, the message is the message of the movie is what I'm here to convey. But there's a part in the movie where the mother, she's talking to the superheroes because she's on the side of Black Adam. She like, listen, sometimes you need a dark hero. You know, sometimes you need a bully to bully the bully, you know, and she is trying to be a mediator between the superheroes and the antihero who can't seem to get their forces joined, even though they're actually on the same side. And she says to the, um, I don't even know his name. What was his name? <laughs> Dr. Fate. I didn't know there was more than one doctor. That's creepy. Where the black dude at? How he not in here? Okay. So the woman is talking to Hawkman. And like DC really has to come up with better superhero names. Like if they gonna mess with Marvel, they got to call people stuff that's cool. Shazam, Hawkman, Dr. Fate. Like it's a little, it, it's not giving. Um, But anyway. She's talking to Hawkman and she says, it's easy to decide what's right and wrong or what's good and bad when you're the one that's drawing the line. And that's the world we've gotten into where there is no barometer for truth anymore. There just is only humanism and individualism. And it's easy when you're the judge and not the defendant to say what's right and what's wrong. It's, it's easy when you're not the one who has to suffer the consequences of the decision that you make. And we are in a time where we need people who are not afraid to do the wrong thing for the right reason. We have so many people who are doing what might seem like the right thing, but for wrong reasons, their whole total intention, their character is polluted. 
their their mindset is divergent. We become so enraptured and in love with facades that the real like we love counterfeits so much that the real gets blasphemed, gets drugged through the mud. And so we're going to need some people that don't mind getting dirty, don't mind getting drugged through the mud to do the right thing, which is kind of like the point of the dark night. But I'm just noticing the rise lately in movies of the antihero of villainous people being the ones that have to bring deliverance and salvation and of course you know on my new episodes I have a habit of talking all the way around an issue before I actually get to my point which is generally how I communicate in real life if you don't listen to the whole thing boy that point it it ain't gonna be pointy it ain't gonna make sense but I say this because we're in a generation where we're fighting for popularity Where if the most amount of people don't like us, all of a sudden our stock plummets. We cease to have value if we are not liked. But it's the people that are willing to not be liked that actually make a difference, that actually change the environments. You know, it can be terribly lonely at the top but it's lonely at the bottom too it's lonely in a crowd when you're not being genuinely who you are even more so than it is to stand in the integrity of who you really are and stand alone for that at least when you stand in integrity and you're alone for that, you haven't lost yourself. I'd rather keep myself and stand alone than to lose myself in a crowd. And this is your daily reminder from room 303 that Magneto was right. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it by any means necessary. I mean, I can honestly say I could see. I'm not saying he was right. But I'm saying I could see Thanos' point. I feel like the argument was valid. It had merit. And we have to get to the point where we can see all sides of a situation. We can't become so polarized by what's popular that we lose sight of objectivity. Everything's not subjective. Some things need an objective opinion. And it's like people have lost sight of the fact people can do good things and still be very bad people. So it follows to reason that a bad person could still do good things. But this text is proof positive that you can do the right thing and still end up in the wrong place. You can't make these black and white judgments where people are involved people can be right they can be doing the right thing and still be doing it for the wrong reason it can be both (laughs) it can be good and bad i really loved watching the mike tyson miniseries like this whole rise of the anti-hero dark hero motif has been pretty pervasive in most of the movies and tv shows that have been coming out lately and i always look at what's going on collectively to see like okay this is the direction that we're going in unfortunately art does imitate life art is still imitating life and life art so a lot of times when we see these character arcs in stories it really does correlate to where we are in history. You know, when you see civilizations like America at the height of their power and popularity, a decline is on the way. And a lot of the narcissism that people have about being great for so long starts to unravel when they're no longer able to operate in the glory and the power that they once knew. That 
that is the time where your shadow man shines. I know we think we have to completely get rid of the shadow, but the goal of shadow work is to integrate the shadow, is to strengthen the man by defeating internal chaos and fear. No, I'm integrated. Tim knows where he can and cannot yep. be. Yep. I'm aware of me at church, at home, at the mall, at Chick-fil-A or whatever. And I just think there's too many disintegrated men and women in the body of Christ leading. Yeah. Because of that reason, they don't get to be one person everywhere. So they wind up being many people everywhere. That's where courage comes from. It doesn't come in the absence of the things that you fear. Courage is built in the presence of the things that you fear. People can be both good and bad. And unless you're a hypocrite, light and darkness exist at most times proportionately within us all. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. For those of us who have had to fight our own shadow, who have had to look in the mirror and see the faults within us, <laughs> for those of us who've grown up in families being the black sheep, you know, who have been alienated and abandoned by friends and partners and lovers, you have to take that inner strength that you found, that thing that you found that made you able to step out from a crowd and now use it for the greater good of people that will never appreciate it, <laughs> may never fully embrace or understand where you're coming from, but we will be the next generation of leaders. I kneel before no one. When it fails, when it falls apart, when the people who have worked so hard to be narcissists and put up facades and lead people astray, fail them. When these people lead them out to the slaughter and they need us, we have to be ready. When they call, a hero is what we're going to give them. We can't have allowed ourselves to be defeated by our own inner voice. That's why when you hear me saying things like the black woman is God. The black woman is the first manifestation of God on earth. When you hear me saying these things about women's empowerment, black empowerment, you know, we are the ostracized ones. We are not the chosen ones. We are the replacements. <laughs> we are the anti-heroes. And it is time for us to embrace that the thing about us that made us unpopular, the thing about us that caused the rejection is the thing that people fear the most. It's the shadow work they can't do. It's the dirty work they won't do. And the dark heroes are going to be the ones that are chosen in dark times, in times of gross darkness, when people are really afraid. We'll be the ones that have nothing else left to fear. So we have to stay in this shadow, shadow boxing, doing that shadow work being strengthened in the places where we're cast out to be the people that people didn't even know they would need. If you feel what I feel and see what I see. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji down in the comments. Until the next transmission, Wi-Fi stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. See you next time. The time to hesitate is through.